Today we're going to be talking about something that is a little interesting that requires a bit of a journey to get to where we are today because we all know that in some regards the Pokemon series is in a little bit of a mess and I, I want to be careful in saying that because this isn't to state that Pokemon's in any sort of trouble or the series isn't going well and that people aren't enjoying playing the game. So that's clearly not the case. You know, the highest rated Pokemon game of all time dropped last year in Pokemon Legends Arceus. But we obviously know all of the issues that Scarlet and Violet had and how embarrassed Nintendo was. And we also know that it's entirely possible that there are something or, or at least something happening internally at Game Freak and at the Pokemon Company that might lead to changes, changes that are not only positive for the series, but a big deal in several ways. And we have basically the person running the Pokemon company making some comments just the other day suggesting major changes are ahead for Game Freak and the Pokemon Company and how they handle Pokemon games. Before I get into this video, I just want to remind you that we're on our road to 150,000 subscribers. So if you guys enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you would drop a like, uh, maybe leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel, and ring a ling that ding a ling so you get notified of all future videos. But first we have to start on this journey and I think it really begins, the first sign of real change or what is going to become change honestly began all the way back in December of last year. And that's because of this little update or in particular this text right here. And this is on the Nintendo of America uh, update page and it was repeated by Nintendo of Europe and put in Nintendo of Japan about issues going on with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And it went on to say that we are aware that players may encounter issues that affect the game's performance. Our goal is always to give players a positive experience with our games and we apologize for the inconvenience. We take the feedback from players seriously and are working on improvements to the games. Now, we all know a performance patch never really came. They took care of some of the bugs and some of that stuff, but they never really fixed the FPS. They didn't fix some of the game breaking stuff like falling through the world. That still happens to some players. So there's a lot of things that they essentially never did and they never really touched the performance of the game. A lot of people that argue the performance has gotten better. It's more of a placebo effect. Play the game longer. There's still problems. So it is what it is, but it was the first sign from Nintendo that something isn't right with Pokemon and they're not happy with it. You know, they, they've made other statements as well, but this was the very first sign that, you know what? If Nintendo has to apologize for a game that sold 20 million in three months, that is something that they're not going to be happy with. They don't want to have to apologize. They don't, Nintendo doesn't like to be embarrassed. And that's sort of what Scarlet and Violet did. It, 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 during the biggest, highest selling sales season of the year, all of the headlines around Switch were how embarrassing Scarlet and Violet was. So, yeah, that's not great. That's not a good way to do it. Now, before all of this, though, there was already some signs that things might be changing at Game Freak, and that's because we see this post over here at My Nintendo News where it says a job listing for Pokemon dev creatures mentions R&D for next-gen hardware. Now, this doesn't mean a whole lot because creatures does work for other companies as well, but what's interesting in here is they are currently looking for a 3D CG modeler according to a recent job listing. However, what makes the job somewhat interesting is that it mentions research and development for next-gen hardware, and it also mentions Unity and Unreal Engine. Keep Unreal Engine in mind here because this might come up yeah, a little bit later, but this was the first sign that maybe something might be changing. But again, this was back in November of last year. Clearly, it wasn't going to make a difference for Scarlet and Violet at that point. But it was interesting that they were hiring people that wanted Unity and Unreal Engine experience for next-gen hardware. Does that mean Switch 2? Did that mean PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series? Uh, Creatures does most of their work specifically for Game Freak and Nintendo, but they do a few projects outside of it. So it was easy to sort of dismiss this as not meaning much or possibly meaning something. And we have to continue this story because... We uh, have another listing here, and this one's actually the earliest we've seen anything related to uh, an engine that Pokemon doesn't use. And this was back in 2017. Did you see fans are losing their minds over this Pokemon-related job listing? And uh, this was posted back, again, 2017. So this is back in the first year of Switch. And we all know that, well, nothing much really changed with Pokemon games since then. But this is what got fans in a tizzy back in the day. 
So just going over some things is, is that Creatures Inc. was hiring people for 3D models and Unreal Engine. So this is just the first time that Creatures Inc. was doing something. Again, doesn't necessarily mean anything because Creatures Inc. was always doing stuff for other companies as well. But specifically, they do stuff for Pokemon. And again, when we go back to that prior job listing, this is actually something brand new. And this is the one that mentions next-gen hardware. The last one didn't. Who knows? I mean, it is entirely possible that Creatures Inc. does use Unreal Engine to create the models, but then the models are ported into a new uh, or a different engine. So, well, look, how Creatures Inc. does their work, I have no idea. But that's not really what's most interesting because now we get into this. Now, this is where uh, we, we show evidence that Game Freak is doing something beyond... Pokemon. Now, they've always made games beyond Pokemon, and most of you guys haven't really played them, but Private Division announced a publishing partnership with Game Freak for an action-adventure title called Project Bloom. Now, we don't even know if this is coming to Nintendo Switch or Nintendo Switch 2, but they, uh, with Pokemon series developer Game Freak for a new action-adventure code named Project Bloom. It's currently in early development, expected to launch in the Private Division's parent company, Take-Two Interactive's fiscal year 2026. So we're thrilled to have the opportunity to create a new IP, that is bold and totally different from the prior works of Game Freak director Kota Furushima. From the beginning, Private Division was the publisher we wanted to work with on our new game. Their track record and global expertise gives us the confidence to create a sweeping new action-adventure game that we want to share about the future. This is just, you know, Project Bloom, Game Freak. This is like some fan art for it. Or not fan art, some official art. And I, I gotta say, looks pretty good. I'm excited to see what Game Freak does with this. Uh, the private division had take to interactive chief strategy officer Michael Warritz added over the past three decades, you'd be hard pressed to find a studio which has released more iconic hits than Game Freak. I mean, it's Pokemon, 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 Pokemon. So we don't know again if this is coming, but I wanted to note this game here because the the, re the reality is everything we're talking about could just be related to Project Bloom. But then again, does this look like something being made? I know this is just art, but does this look like a game being made with a Pokemon engine? Look, some of Game Freak's other work, you can argue, is maybe made with the Pokemon engine. Does this look like a game made with the Pokemon engine? Now, remember, this was announced, you know, back in, psh, gosh, this article went up back uh, earlier this year on May 9th. So, when you think about that, and, and you think about Project Bloom, you wonder, huh, so Game Freak is doing something that's more ambitious with a different engine already, and it was announced this year. Now, more on this. Back in June of 2016, Game Freak has an Unreal Engine job posting, okay? So I just showed you Project Bloom. Chances are it's going to be using Unreal Engine. That's my just just a shot in the dark. So all this could be for is that. Uh, but we're going to look at some stuff here. So Game Freak used a proprietary engine for the last mainline series titles. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, which came out in November of 2022. The recent job listing thing for Unreal Engine-based technical artists has sparked a lively conversation on the game's official subreddit. This brought forward some expectations of players from the franchise and their concerns about Nintendo as a platform. And you can kind of see... The post here put up by Lou too. Look, yeah, they're hiring people for Unreal Engine, right? That's just reality. They are factually hiring Unreal Engine developers. It is what it is. It, it, it it's it's exciting in some regards, but then we have to get to we we, we have to get to a, a bit of the rumor mill. So you guys might remember this post over here from Zippo that we put up a while ago talking about this partnership between Nintendo and Unreal. But when you went down, it highlighted that Game Freak was going to be one of the companies using Unreal Engine. Now, again, this post was you know quite recent, and we already knew that they were hiring people for Unreal Engine, so it wasn't a big leap to be like, oh, Game Freak's using Unreal Engine, probably for Project Bloom, but also with Creatures Inc. having people on staff that are uh, familiar with Unreal Engine. Now you have, obviously, people on... Game Freak side familiar with Unreal Engine and making Project Bloom makes you wonder, is there going to be changes afoot? But look, if that's all there was, it would just be all speculation at this point, and we would just say, hey, yeah, they have some Unreal Engine devs. It's just with Project Bloom. It has nothing to do with Pokemon. Pokemon isn't changing. Pokemon isn't going anywhere. The only thing suggesting anything would be Nintendo just being upset with the Pokemon company, but that doesn't mean that anything's going to change. That was until this happened and for once comicbook.com is actually the source on this i really good investigating journalism by them so it says the pokemon company coo addresses the possibility of slowing down game releases 
Now, the Pokemon company is having conversations about how to ensure that future Pokemon games are quality products while being released on a regular release schedule. At the Pokemon World Championships in Yokohama, Japan, comicbook.com had the opportunity to participate in a group interview with Dakota Yutsunamiya. I, I totally butchered all that. I'm really sorry. He's the chief operating officer of the Pokemon company. While the interview was limited to overall questions about the brand as focused to specifics about the game or anime, comicbook.com did ask whether there was a specific schedule that the Pokemon brand was beholden to when it comes to the release of new games. And here was his response. I think in general, if you look at the past, the path we've taken up until now has been this constant release, always regularly releasing products on a fairly fixed kind of cadence, you might say. He responded via a translator. Always having these products able to be introduced and new experiences for our customers, and that's how we've operated up until now. I think we're still operating in that way, but there's more and more conversations as the development environments change about how we can continue to do this while making sure that we're ensuring really quality products are also being introduced. It was the closest we may get to an acknowledgement about the issues faced by Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, which faced significant technical issues post-release. The games have required several significant patches since then. Game Freak, the developer of the Pokemon Mainland series, has released a new Pokemon game almost on an annual schedule since the franchise launched in 96. Over 27 years, only seven years have passed when Game Freak has not released a new Mainline series game or remake, etc., we will note that the introduction of Pokemon Sword and Shield provided a new wrinkle to the release schedule as Game Freak opted to release DLC in 2020 instead of a new game or remake. DLC for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is also due in 2023. So what's interesting about all of these statements is the Pokemon company, which, which resides over the entire Pokemon franchise from games to anime to cards to merchandise to everything in between, is recognizing publicly without naming the games that there is a problem with their development pipeline of pokemon games uh well again they're not going to throw their current games under the bus and i don't expect them to be as forthright as nintendo because nintendo was caught off guard and was just immediately responding like holy crud this game is really bad in terms of technical performance that's all people are talking about we need to get in front of this and apologize the pokemon company is not going to do that uh, you look, the game sold 20 plus million units. So they're not going to apologize. But what they will do is, at least in this case, recognize that there is something going on. Uh, and, 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 and there's something about maybe taking more time with games, something about the development environments are changing today compared to what they used to be. And they want to make sure they're releasing quality products. It, it, it's one of those recognitions that the Pokemon company is vastly aware of the criticism of Scarlet and Violet. And what they're trying to do moving forward is find a way to maybe keep up their cadence of releases without, you know, affecting the quality of the experience. And when you talk about this, and he mentions the development environments specifically, it makes you wonder, you know, when you have Unreal Engine, you know, developers being hired, and you see Game Freak working on an unrelated product using those developers. When you see rumors out there, when you see that Creatures Inc. has been hiring Unreal developers for years, it makes you look and wonder, you know what, Nintendo themselves is using Unreal Engine. And not just in, you know, side games like Yoshi or something, right? Like that, that was done by a third-party company. They want to use Unreal? Okay, use Unreal. Nintendo themselves used it with one of their internal studios for Pikmin 4. Nintendo is not happy with what happened at the release of Scarlet and Violet. I have to wonder if there is a change coming at Game Freak and with the Pokemon Company where they're finally going to decide we need to get off of that old 3DS engine that we keep you know, rehashing and modifying for modern hardware. It's clearly not made for modern hardware. It was made for hardware that basically can run on a calculator at this point. And what we need is something that's meant for today's games on today's hardware. 
and maybe Unreal Engine is just a quick and easy way to go. They don't need to develop a new engine from the ground up. They clearly do not want to make a new engine from the ground up. It's a heavy investment. It causes game delays, and there's no guarantee that they even have the ability to do that right now, and there's already ready-made engines that work really, really well as proven with games like, you know, Yoshi and... You know, Pikmin 4 work really well with Nintendo's current hardware, and that's where they're making games. Now, there's obviously going to be growing pains with this. I'll give you an example. The next Pokemon games are not going to have Pokemon Home support out the gate, granted, nor does Scarlet and Violet, but they're not probably going to have Pokemon Home support out the gate because getting the game to interact properly with Pokemon Home, making sure that the Pokemon they want to be transferred in work, making sure the Pokemon they want to be transferred out you know, also work with all the other games is going to be something that is quite difficult. And I know this doesn't make up for any of the other reasons that you guys might dislike the Pokemon company or dislike the Pokemon games today. But reality is, I do think the Pokemon company, well, I don't know if it's going to be with their next game, which is probably already in development or deep into development. Let's say the Pokemon Legends game, right? Like that next Pokemon Legends game or whatever, or whatever's coming next year. I don't expect next year's game to be on Unreal Engine. I want to make this very clear. I think they're still going to use the engine they have now because the game would have already been in development. But I do think they are considering after that, maybe it's the next mainline Pokemon game even, that, you know, like the next new generation game, I guess is what I should say, like the next generation of Pokemon, that maybe they're going to be using Unreal Engine. And in using Unreal Engine, they might find a better performing game, a better looking game, and be able to do so much more than they ever could with that modified 3DS engine. I think the Pokemon company is going to find themselves, and Game Freak, and Creatures Inc., extremely happy using something like Unreal Engine versus what they're using now. So while this is no guarantee that the future of Pokemon, you know, probably after next year, is going to be something Unreal Engine related, you know, all the Pokemon games coming to Nintendo Switch 2 when they're exclusive are going to end up being on Unreal Engine, there's no proof or the, the decided uh I, I shouldn't say there's no evidence but there's no you know guarantee that's going to happen i will note that it seems possible they keep hiring it keeps coming up creatures inc and game freak and nintendo and pokemon company unreal engine just keeps coming up as does the admission that something needs to change on the development side as does the admission from nintendo that they're not happy with what's happening with Pokemon. So in the end, I think change is afoot. I think Nintendo is going to help them now that they have experience with Unreal Engine. Guarantee they're going to be helping out and trying to encourage them to use the best. In fact, I'm actually wondering if after this whole sh you know thing went down and Nintendo caught wind and got pissed about this whole Pokemon thing and needing to apologize publicly, if it was Nintendo themselves that went to Game Freak and said, hey, you guys, we got to do something different. How about let's try out Unreal Engine? Because all of the Unreal Engine hiring posts at Game Freak happened this year. Notably, after Nintendo apologized publicly back in December. You have to wonder if there was a little influence there. Then you throw out, hey, let's make a partnership with a company that's going to force us to use Unreal Engine. Okay, cool. They're doing this Project Bloom thing. Project Bloom, again, that art looks really great, but we don't really know what the game's going to be. Action, adventure, RPG, whatever. But we know that probably through that, you know, they're like, hey, let's, let's play around with this. And in playing around with it, I think it's coming over to Pokemon. I think by, I, I hate saying this far out, but I believe by 2030, we will finally have a Pokemon game running entirely on Unreal Engine. So that's just my prediction. You guys let me know you think about this down in the comments below. I don't talk a lot about Pokemon because, you know, look, I, I, I'm not a heavy Pokemon player. I, I enjoy Pokemon Legends. That, that's like Legends Arceus was just, mwah, that, that, that to me was wonderful. Didn't, visually not great, but just a, a, an excellent gaming experience. And uh, I want to see Pokemon continue to find ways to innovate, improve, and, and, and get to a spot where we all can just be proud of what we're playing. That being said, I do want to thank you guys so much for being here. I am Nathaniel Rumpeljance from Nintendo Prime, and I'll catch you guys in that next video.